This fucking dude, yo. Take it firm in your hands like this. Firmly grasp it. Look at that. Now. Hi everybody, I'm Degenerate, and welcome back to Curtain Cowboys. Now, this is possibly gonna be like the last Wait a minute. episode that I make. Please ignore it. Just ignore it. I found other codes. Yes. Anyways, yes, Florence is being done right now. Because he was done off camera. I figured it out after recording the second episode. Alright, we already know all this. <laughs> We're gonna sleep in our room until Saturday, cause he only pops up during the weekends. How would I have figured that out? I wasn't paying attention. Okay. And if you're here for long enough, the guy tells you, um, what does he tell you? He tells you that you could reset your relationships with everybody for 600 bits if you go left when you leave the um, town. I, I did it, of course, but it, it it's literally just without having to start a new game. That's how we would do that. So we go straight to the sheriff's office because that's where Lawrence is. I'm going to talk to him. You approach the two men, though one is in your sights. The usual officer doesn't seem to be paying much attention, his gaze at the floor. The unfamiliar one, however... Seems to be giving you his full attention, brow slightly raised at, as his blue eyes stare into your soul. Blue? Weird. You look black to me. Um, The middle one is not the best option. Yeah, I basically- I already know what happens. I'm just doing it for you guys because I know someone was like really excited to see him. So I, I'm like, I'm not going to end the, the series with- not romancing Florence, are you serious? So yeah, I'm gonna ask where he's from. That's what, cause that's what I did the first time. Sorry if this is forward, but I'm a bit curious where you come from. I remember the officer mentioning Little Rock, but I don't remember people from there having fancy accents like yours. Rizatron. His lips widen a little into a soft smile, as if it isn't that common for him to hear. France, despite my name, I'm from a small town there. <laughs> you don't quite understand what he means regarding his name, but otherwise it makes sense. Oh, I've never met someone from France before. Have you been living there long? Oh, having, living here long. Again, I'm illiterate. So. You try your best to make good conversation, curious about him. In the States or in Little Rock? He laughs softly, adjusting himself so his hands are on his hips. His head turned a little as he looks at you. In Little Rock, maybe four years. He shrugs, eyes focused on yours as he speaks. It really draws you in. I love that about a person. He parts his lips to speak, but before he's able, someone bursts through the door. All dramatic like, it's Magnolia! She's so adorable. I love her so much. Officer, I need some help, please! He looks worried, eyes wide and big. Pretty red lips trembling as Jed po head pops up and alert. Magnolia. Oh, I found out that that's his niece. Cause I, I, he said it in his route, but I wasn't paying attention fully. <laughs> he was rizzing me up too much. But yes, that is his niece. Hence why he was upset when she wasn't in the thing. Because Jack, he's a certain person who decides, hey, let me kill everybody that um, Degenerate sleeps with after she sleeps with me. Because he's jealous. Way to go, Jack. Clap it up for him, everybody. Jed sits up straighter, adjusting his vest as he looks at her. A careful softness to his expression. What's the trouble with you, sweetheart? Lawrence peels his eye away, eyes away from you, straightening up and letting his hands fall to his sides. Well, sir, my room has been broken into at the saloon. Well, I wasn't sure what to do. He settles awkwardly. I assumed it was one of my patrons, but I never 
shown them to my b b bodier bodor before oh, <laughs> his eyes wander from the floor back up dancing between you officer florence and sheriff judd from julie were stolen and a couple of other things if you'd like to go look i haven't touched anything since i got home Judd reaches out patting florence's shoulder with a understanding nod florence nudges you then he walks out following magnolia as she as he stops in the doorway are you coming of course I am. I'm a junior detective. At first you think he's referring to Jed, at least until you meet his stare. Oh. <laughs> me? I'm just here to- let me stop. Let me stop. I was gonna say something crazy. I, I, I had to stop myself sometimes. You follow quick, almost delighted for the invite. It seems he trusts you enough for something like this, huh? You both follow Magnolia through Summer Fair Town Square. She's a bit of a nervous pep. She has a bit of a nervous pep to her step. You can tell that much. For a moment, you wonder what Florence picks up on. You look at his expression, cold and straight. Hmm. This fucking dude, yo. He bothers me. Because I got all the endings, guys. All of them. And then you both enter the saloon. Following Magnolia, you both head along the side staircase. Up the stairs and down the hallway are a couple of rooms. He unlocks and opens one of the large one with a large skeleton key. Ooh, Magnolia's room. <laughs> and we know who breaks into her house. It's fucking Will. He's the weirdest guy ever. You both enter Magnolia's room, the smell of perfume. The first thing you notice. There should be something in between that is the first thing you notice. The room is currently in a chaotic state and part of you wonders what it looks like normally. <laughs> Mind the mess. <laughs> you were robbed, ma'am. <laughs> it's fine. It's as if she read your mind. So about what time were you gone, ma'am? Lawrence parts from your side, beginning to walk around the room. I was gone about 8 p.m. yesterday to about 6 a.m. this morning. She holds herself in her arms. Florence nods in response as he peers around. Degenerate, can you ask her some questions for me while I look around? Of course, anything for you. I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna say no. He offers you a small leather-bound notebook and what seems to be a, a nub of a pencil. So annoying. Interview her. Why are we ignoring it? Oh, sure. You take the notebook from him and the small pencil. You sit up a little, adjusting yourself before turning and looking at Magnolia. You aren't quite sure what to ask her first. If anything has happened like this before. Has anything like this happened to you before? Her brows knit together as she looks at you. Um, I mean, not to this degree. Degree? A month or so ago, someone broke into in through, the win through my window. Did you report it? She looks a little uneasy before laughing. No, I, I know I shouldn't. I shouldn't have, but whatever it was doing... Whatever it was didn't take much. She sways a little, looking from you to f back to Florence, who is currently poking around nearby the window. Much? And her head snaps back to you before she laughs. Just one of my scars, nothing too special. It was red with polka dots. It was on my nightstand before that incident. Now, if anyone remembers, I know they you do, Mr. Will was playing with his little bone friends, and one of them had a scarf around its neck, and I noticed it almost immediately. I was like, bro, this is so weird to have on a skeleton. And it was red, and even though he's blue. For a moment, you wonder if she me misplaced it somehow. You scribble down some notes against the rough pages. Ask what has been stolen. So what exactly was taken? You look around, biting your lip at the mess. I had a jewelry box in my vanity. It was a. It was all vintage, my mother's. She sighs softly, clearly a bit distraught about losing something so dear to her. Whoever came stole the box as well, just took the whole thing and ran off. Along with that, I'm missing some more, uh, personal garments. She looks away with a small, light-hearted laugh. Your face turns a little red at the thought of what she means. He's so weird, yo. I you scribble down some notes against the rough pages. We're done. You can't- well, if we met Will before this, we would have been able to ask her something else, but we're not gonna do that. You can't think of anything else to ask, so instead you look down at your notes. As much as I think he's so weird, I still don't want him to get arrested, because I, I know he's just 
he's just weird. Like that's that's it. Nigga can't interact with another human normally. So and I feel bad for him. So I will not turn him in. I did try it one time, but he he never disappeared. He just kept coming back. He's like William Afton. <laughs> you flip the page, hoping to start a new. Wait. What the fuck? Absolute gibberish. <laughs> you stare at the strange script on the page, his heart thumping. None of it makes sense. You're like, oh, stop. You gulp close the notebook quickly. Degenerate, thank you for your help. You don't have to yell. You look up only to be met with Florence's gaze. He walks up, lips curled into an unfamiliar smile. All right, Magnolia, thank you so much. I think we got enough from now. for now. Enough from you. Would you like us to send someone over to help you clean it up? His voice is calm, almost caring as he moves a hand around you. Huh? <laughs> oh, what? It rests on your lower back. Huh? I did. I don't remember. I don't remember this. I don't remember this. That was so weird. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna tell you to move it though. So. I'm alright. I appreciate it, though. Besides, I need to clean this place anyhow. Just make sure to keep me updated if you catch the culprit. You slowly nod, looking down at the leather cover. Lawrence pulls away, turning and heading to the door. These Rizatrons, I swear. Almost on instinct, you follow him. You both travel out the door and down the stairs and head outside of the saloon. Outside the lively saloon, Florence finds some... Saw this against a tree, leaning and watching you. My notebook? Of course, you could take it with your demonic writings. I don't want any parts of it. He asked, putting a hand out. Give it to him, yeah. Uh, no, actually, what I did was I asked about the writing because, of course, I was curious. You hesitate. I have to ask, in your notebook, I saw some weird writing. You take a small breath, looking up at him. It didn't look like English or what I'd assume to be French. You look down at the notebook in your hands. Show me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you flip through the pages, showing him the writing you found. Ah, don't worry. He takes the notebook and you don't really seem to put up a fight when he does. It's just another language, nothing strange really. Okay. <laughs> you feel a little uneasy, but realize you are acting all weird about it for no reason. I'm sorry. You laugh a little. Don't worry about it. I understand foreign things can be a little scary. <laughs> I'm not white, though. <laughs> but not to say that all white people are, just, are like that, but the ones I've encountered. By the look on your face, you you can tell he noticed his joke went over your head. No, it didn't. Sorry, scratch that. <laughs> Is he trying to flirt with you? Is he? He's already caressing my, my hip, my lower back. Might as well. You find yourself a little puzzled. He tried. So hate to ask, but do you have a gun? Because everybody has a gun. Pardon? You're a little confused by his question. I don't. I don't like all this. All of these rumors I've been hearing. I don't like the idea of you going around unprotected. Especially if I'm not here if I'm not there to help you. What a manly man. You watch as he pulls something from his holster. It's a gun, small and silver. Must be cleaned regularly or something. I want you to take this. Your eyes widen. But isn't that yours? I have another. This is my spare. You take it. Sure. That's what I did. <laughs> you re Plus, we can't progress if we don't. <laughs> you reach out taking the gun. The metal feels strange and heavy in your hands. I'm assuming you don't have a holster. Yes, you're right. We assume that. He looks at the way you hold it, brows pushed and serious. I'd offer to get you one, but he seems to get the uh, get an idea. Take mine. What? Before you can really stop him, he walks up, undoing his holster around his hip. Wait. He moves, hands gliding, guiding the belt around your hips. That was very much just an excuse to do that. He's close to you, hands broad as he slips an arm around you, securing it around your waist. He pauses, looking into your eyes. A strange flush <laughs> scrawls across his face as he lets go. 
So you just put it here and here. Careful, it's loaded. Great. He motions to the holster on your hip. You slowly nod, swallowing before you put the gun away. Thank you. You manage to choke out. He nods, looking away before taking a step back. I appreciated your help a lot today. Thank you again. As much as I'd love to stick here and chat, I have to get going so I can write down a log. You nod, quickly understanding. I have to go. You stay safe, okay? I'll be here every weekend, so if you'd like, I can show you how to use that thing sometime. <laughs> you quickly nod as he, and he turns, walking off and leaving you uptown. You find yourself in Summerfair Town Square. Where would you like to go? Home. I don't want to interact with anybody else until... Oh, I also found out that if you're here long enough and you go to the... What's it called? The... Fuck, I forgot. Where Jedediah is, the, the sheriff's office, he has a party hat. It's so cute. I thought it was super funny. But yes, we have to wait till next Saturday. We couldn't... I thought I could just go Sunday. Because it's the next day and it's still the weekend. But no. Okay, so he, this is him telling us about the... The thingy. We're gonna go to the sheriff's office. And we're going to approach Florence. You approach Florence, who seems to be watching you expectantly. Hey, good to see you again. Let's get- let me get those shooting lessons, baby- baby girl. Come on. Good to see you too. I was wondering if I could take you up on that shooting lesson you suggested. He smiles warmly, looking from you to Officer Jed. I'm sure I have the time. Jed, I'm going to lunch. That alright? Yeah, that's fine. I like you, Jedediah. I like you a lot. I like all of them. I do. Except for Jack. I could deal with everything else. It's just... That ending is, is burned into my brain. The way he does, um... The Jean is the worst. I figured out how to say his name after the episode. <laughs> after the first episode. I searched it up and it's a mustard. It's mustard. Oh my gosh. That's why he was yellow. You smile a little when Florence attempts to sit up straighter. His smile soft as he motions to the door. After you. What a gentleman. You smile, walking past him and out the <laughs> to the cobbles. Outside, Florence lets out a long breath. I'm glad to see you. I almost thought I scared you off. No. Excitement. Oh no, you didn't scare me at all. I'm really excited to do this. I've always wanted to learn. Plus, we get to do something together. That'll be fun. He seems to be staring at your lips as you speak. His eyes trailed up. Yeah, it'll be nice. Good skill to have. Mm-hmm. Totally. He turns away looking downtown. Let's get going then. I know a good spot we can go that we won't go hitting any people or animals. Hmm. So he even cares about animals. And with that, Florence makes his way down the street, heading down and right past the office you both once came from. Huh? After ten minutes of walking, you find yourself near a graveyard. A small iron fence surrounds the area, the gate wired shut. We can practice here. A graveyard? Isn't that, I don't know, disrespectful? With his back to you, you watch as he unlocks the gate with a thick key. He turns. Disrespectful? No. He smiles a little. Besides, we'll just be taking use of an empty spot anyhow. Won't go pissing off any of those who lie here. He motions for you to follow as he heads inside. The graveyard is small, and from here you can see towards the back is dull. You can see towards the back is dull. There's a dull rotting wood wall. That <laughs> is the iron one. It can be assumed this was the original fencing. Here we go, let's see. He looks around finding a bottle on the ground. Young people don't know how to clean up, I swear. He speaks as if he isn't young himself. <laughs> like younger than that he narrows his brow his brows as he sets the bottle onto a fence post a good target i know it's small but it should work i got this i'm a sharpshooter he looks back at you smirking a little you got the gun oh yeah of course 
You reach into your holster. For a moment you remember how he gave it to you. Your face turns a little red as you pull out the firearm. Here, office, Officer Florence. Just call me Florence. <laughs> he reaches out taking it and checking it over once or twice. You've been taking care of it? I appreciate it. You nod, not having used it to warn it being clean. Now take it, firm in your hands like this. Firmly grasp it! Without even considering your feelings on the matter, he takes your hands into his, putting the cool metal against your palm. His rough hands adjust your fingers, fixing your hand on the gun as it aims at his belly. Now, when, having, when waving this thing around, keep your finger off the trigger, right? Only put your finger on it if you intend to shoot. You nod, nervous at the fact it's pointing south, right against his gut. Calm it. He doesn't look worried, though. Alright, so I'm gonna shoot the bottle. <laughs> he said we. <laughs> we, right over there. <laughs> he points, moving out of your way. With something like a pistol, your aim is important. You can be a little more sloppy with a shotgun, but I recommend good aim art regardless. Prepare for some recoil, so keep your arm loose for now. We don't want you breaking a wrist or anything. Or something. Guns are so weird. Like... I should... You... Damn! <laughs> he stands to your left, looking ahead at the bottle. Okay, go. Aim. You raise your hands, aiming towards the bottle. Your finger creeps onto the trigger. And with some curiosity, you apply some pressure. You fucking missed. You fire, gun recoiled, and causing your arm to jolt. Higher, actually, just a little. Make sure to breathe out when you shoot. Oh, alright. You aim a little higher, taking a deep breath. A jolt of energy runs through you, a zip of nerves as you fire yet another shot. And we miss a fucking gun. You watch as the bullet whizzes past the bottle too high. Here, let me help. Yes, sir. <laughs> You get no time to protest that he, as he grasps you from behind. Sorry, I looked at the H keys so fast. His hands run along your arms before meeting your hands. His chest pressed solid on your back. Just a little lower. Here, I think. He takes a breath, chest rising and falling against you. Now take a breath and fire. You pull the trigger. We're just that good. The glass shatters and Florence is quick to cover your face. Glass splinters bouncing off of his hands and your clothes. We should have stepped back a little further, huh? Why were we that close? He drops his hand, letting go of you, and instead taking a look at you head on. You okay? Uh... Yes? Yeah, I'm good. You admire the sparkling glass along the wooden fence. I can't believe I managed to shoot it dead center. Well, he helped. Lawrence laughs a little before patting your shoulder. Just wait, I could see you popping a couple in a row soon enough. He turns to look at the fence himself. Wanna try again? Sounds just peachy. Yes, sir. He nods, looking around for a new bottle. You admire the gun a little, the sound of Florence rustling around the graveyard, leaving you with, an, with a comfortable peace. Finally, the clink of Florence setting the butt of a new, bo butt. <laughs> of a new bottle down catches your attention. Alright, another one, you can do it. He lets out a small sigh, tapping his finger along the top of the glass before stepping back. You also take a step back just to prevent the spray of glass. You aim, breathe. The glass shatters. Nice going. Thank you. He watches, smirking a little. We got two more shots, at least till I reload her. Isn't it weird that guys call like things that they own women? Or she, her? Like, I don't know, just it always fascinated me. It's like men, when they address their cars, they address it as a she. She's a beauty, ain't she? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then, same thing with boats. 
She got da 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 horsepower or whatever. I don't know men speak. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, they just... It's things that they own. They call them she, her. It's pretty questionable. <laughs> That's just a little thing I think about sometimes. It's dumb. Now, this is important. Anyone can shoot bottles. Oh, we're getting to the nitty gritty now. Let me... Let me get comfortable. Ooh. <laughs> You're gonna be shooting living things. Who said that? I'm... No. <laughs> he looks tense, staring at you with a, with a fire in his eyes. You gulp a little. <laughs> then he steps in front of you. Shoot me. <laughs> I didn't do it the first time. Because I was like, no, I don't... No. What? You almost could laugh. <laughs> I'm not gonna shoot you. He looks dead serious. Right here, do it. No. He points to his head. He has a nice face. Anyone can shoot a gun, but every- <laughs> But not everyone can kill a man. Well, that's not gonna be me, so. You gulp looking at the gun. So shoot me. Why would I even do that? You die, you're crazy. You can't even believe this. He grabs your hand, hoisting it up and pressing the head of the end of the revolver to his forehead. Pull the trigger. Oh my god, this reminded me of that fucking scene from Rick and Morty. Do it! Do it, motherfucker! He seems to be thinking. Brows creased hard. This feels so silly, crazy even. He doesn't even seem like he's joking. I said I wouldn't do it. Afterwards, trying to get his other endings, though I did do it. Because <laughs> I was trying to get the ball rolling. No! You glare, crying out. You're sick. You look away. If you don't want to be in the world, don't make it my fault. You you watch his, as, his, as his expression changes and lets out a sigh. Then with the quickness, he rips the gun from your hand. He holds it to his head, raising his brows. And you quickly shut your eyes before you can witness more. He falls, gun scattered along the stone. Oh, that's a... What? Yep, there he is. You stare in disbelief. He just did that, right in front of you. Your eyes manage, finally manage to pry away from his corpse, instead looking at the gravel on the ground of the graveyard. Oh, the irony. Degenerate. Welcome back <laughs> to the land of the living. Your gaze starts back to him. His eyes are open, a stream of blood stained along his forehead, down to his hair. He sits up, grumbling before moving his hand up, whipping the spot with his sleeve. What? The hell? Your eyes are locked on him. Only moments ago, this man was dead. I can explain. Please. He, he looks even better now. Shit. <laughs> you should've shot him. <laughs> he gets up, brushing himself off before walking over to you. You don't know exactly how you're supposed to feel. I can't die. Michael Lafton. I've died over and over, but it just doesn't stick. He seems frustrated. Every time, a new wound appears on my body, like a marking. Why does he want to tell me this? Am I just... that amazing? He reaches out, his rough palm resting gently against your face. I'm gonna ask about the notebook, because that's exactly what I did when I first played it. Everything I'm doing now is exactly what I did when I first got his route. What did the weird writing in your notebook have to do with this? There's a feeling in your gut that this is important. It's just a diary. The words though, the language, I don't know. He seems genuine. I wish there was more to that, you know? I think it just would have been nice to get a little more, you know, deeper into that, that whole story there. I can read it and write it, but the origin, I'm not sure. Must have been something I learned before. Four. I woke up in a field with no memories about seven years ago. I was covered in blood and I didn't remember a thing. He looks at you carefully, dropping his hand instead to rest on your shoulder. I don't know anything as to why I'm like this or why I'm here. But I'd like you to be here with me, even if I scared you. His gaze is intense, eyes staring into what feels to be your soul. I really like you. 
You stare, gulping a little. <laughs> you glance at his hands along your shoulder. You both sit there, silent, only about a foot apart. Before you can speak, his hands move instead, fingers brushing through your hair before he leans in. His lips press to yours, warm and sweet as he kisses you. Kiss him back! You kiss back, deciding, why not? This is crazy, but he looks good like this. So, it feels like everything in this town is right about that. Well, we're the only one person. You can feel his hand sort of grope you, having slid down your back to squeeze your ass through your clothes. You say something on the matter, but your mouth is quite occupied. Are you really going to do this here? His hands move up, grabbing you by your trousers. Yeah, because I'm wearing pants. He unbuttons them, a bit rough as he pulls them down against your thighs. Let's see what we have to work with, huh? Get to them bits, you know? He turns your around body pressed against your backside. He has the most... Like... <laughs> there's... He has the best NSF, NSFW CG, literally. It, just wait. You can feel his rough hand prod your crotch. Oh god. Perfection! Look! There's no need to censor! You find yourself embarrassed, grabbing a hold of the of the fence you once shot bottles against. Look at that. Now. I wish I could read all this. I really do. But I can't. Unfortunately. I don't want to get in trouble, so... I came back for the sole reason to just show this part. I, I translated it. It says something about, um... Something along the lines of, like... I can't hold anymore, or something like that. That's what this is. That's what that says. His French self. Very nice. Very flirty. We're back. He helps you up. A soft smile on his face. That was... Wow. <laughs> Your face is flush as you hold on to him. He leans and kisses you one more time. We should head back. I definitely overstayed my lunch break. He laughs a little, admiring you with a soft sort of expression. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> You're sad as he sits up, <laughs> guiding you along through the graveyard. I'd love to just stay with you, or you with me, but I have to work. Maybe we can see each other again another time? You can tell he means it. Hand held warmly in yours. After walking together, enjoying the breeze and air, you both end up back in town. I'll be seeing you. His hand squeezes yours. And I, you. How romantic. Like Romeo and Juliet. No. <laughs> You're stricken a little at the sight of a small, sad smile on his face as he turns and heads towards the sheriff's office. Huh. Find yourself in summer fair. Yes. So that was Florence. Very nice. Really wish we could get more information on that whole thing. Um, I want to do another thing, another thing that I literally remembered while I was playing it. Talk to the innkeeper. We already know the codes. <clears throat> the codes were beta, pink. Shrek and Gatoba. But if you say the name of the demon guy that pops up when you die, he says something. Mortem. Oh. <laughs> he said, oh. You know of my brother. A queer. He smiles a little. Tell him I say hello. You turn and walk back to the parlor. That's a little, it's a little Easter egg. I found out. Because I was trying to figure out all the codes and... Same mortem made that happen. Uh, so yes, that's that's basically Florence's route. Um, my favorite ending though is um, where is it? This one? Or where is it? Intruded. Cause when you, why am I even over here? When you sleep with Jedediah, you get interrupted by Florence, who I didn't know at first. So, if you were to do Florence first, and then do Jedediah, then you get little special lines. So, I kind of liked it just a little bit. Just a little bit. 
not not completely i don't want to be judged or anything but yeah uh, the jack versus dijon thing it was terrible to have to experience it was because they both if you sleep with both of them and then sleep and go sleep in your bed you you wake up and they're they're basically talking over your body or whatever and it's you're you're like why am i here in the woods right now and what do they do they tell you you gotta pick one because i know you did all you did both of us so you can't have both love and i'm like okay what did i do i picked Dijon first duh like are you serious i picked him first then there's the option to like push him out of the way because he's gonna end up she's gonna shoot him jack goes oh let me just shoot him yeah. what he uh, his the cg was so sad i almost i cried i actually cried because i was like no fucking way of course i got upset then if you pick jack he, you just go with jack like it's stupid it's dumb it's like super dumb then i think if you don't pick either he takes you anyways like uh, he's all over the place just i just wanted to finish up doing everybody because it's not fair that i did everybody else and then never did florence so he was done hope everyone enjoyed it <laughs> i know i did and you guys know what to do basically right a like comment subscribe and hit the bell because even though i do have my schedule in my bio it's still always safe to turn on that bell so that you know if i post anything early or late and with that being said i will see you all next time